Thanks for joining me today. I'm Corel Painter Master Aaron Rutten, and today I'm going to be reviewing Painter 4. Painter 4, what are we going back in time here? This is made possible through Macintosh emulation. This is a Macintosh emulator that runs in JavaScript. For those of you out there who don't know anything about emulation, basically you just download this application and it runs a virtual Macintosh on your computer. It's very easy to set up. It's a little bit harder to install Painter. You'll have to download Painter from the Internet Archive. But overall, it's not too difficult to get this set up. So I already have Corel Painter 4 installed here, and we'll go ahead and check it out. Now, this is the oldest version of Corel Painter that I have used. When I first started with Painter, I was using Painter 11, so this is going back quite a ways, but it'll be interesting to see how much Painter has changed between those two versions. So we'll start by taking a look at the interface. We have our canvas, we have our toolbox, we have our brush selector, we have our brush properties, and we have our color set libraries. You may recognize a lot of this stuff from the contemporary versions of Corel Painter. So I'll go ahead and select a brush type here. Let's try these liquid brushes. I'll choose a color to paint with. And as you can see, it doesn't look that much different from the contemporary liquid brushes. Choose another color here and we can blend that into it. Now I don't have pen pressure for my tablet because I wasn't able to install a Wacom driver and I don't know that the Wacom driver would even work, but I'm able to draw anyways. You could draw with your mouse or you could use your drawing tablet. I'm using the Cintiq for this, I just don't have pen pressure. So it works pretty well. Let's try the loaded oils. Really nice oil brushes with a bit of color variability. As you can see, the dabs and strokes look very much like they do in the current version of Corel Painter. We have our brush category here, and then we have all of our brush variants. We can also change the different categories here. Let's try water. This seems to be the Just Add Water Blender. Let's try watercolor. I think that's what I was looking for. And this is the older digital watercolor, so it's not going to diffuse or do anything fancy like that. Let's try diffuse water. Now, because my screen is so small and there's so many palettes, it's kind of hard to fit everything on screen. I think that layers should be in objects, but maybe there just aren't layers in this version of Painter, or at least I'm not able to find them. So because I'm not able to clear this watercolor, what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and create a new document. I'm just gonna use the default size here, which is incredibly small, but I remember that computers back at this time were not very powerful and monitors were not very large. Let's try another brush. We have our familiar image hose nozzles. We have the ink pens, pencils, chalk, charcoal. There's even cloners, which we can use to clone. Felt tip pens or markers, crayons, airbrushes, and erasers. There's even dodge and burn and masking, which you can use to paint a layer mask, which is interesting because this was removed from Painter and then reintroduced. You'll also notice you can change your color using the color picker here. This hasn't changed much other than it doesn't look gummy like this anymore. We'll move this up so you can see the whole panel here. We have our foreground and background color. We can see our HSV values and we can even change our color variability. There's also papers, which we can use to change the texture of our canvas and media. There are gradients patterns, and weaves. As far as the tools, we have the zoom tool, grabber tool, page rotate tool. I'm interested to see how that works. You've got your lassos, you have your adjuster tool, good old Bezier pen, shape tools, your brush tool, which is what you use to paint with, flood fill, color dropper, rectangular selection, text tool, shape selection tool, and shape edit tools. And then as you can see, each tool has its own sub tools that you can select from. Then in the menus, we have the menus that you would expect here. You can choose your clone source, you can save your artwork, and there's other commands that you might expect to see here. In the edit menu, we have some edit commands. Let's check out the preferences, just out of curiosity. We can change the brush cursor. There's auto saving, there's area averaging. Then we have some effects that we can choose from. Many of these are still found in the contemporary version of Corel Painter. We can manipulate our canvas in various ways. There's also functions for working with shapes. And there's the Movies menu, which allows you to record your painting and create animations. The Window menu has all of your palettes. And then there's a Help menu with a really handy Painter Help Guide for this version if you want to learn more about it. The limited number of topics here really gives you an idea of how much they've added to Painter since version 4. Out of curiosity, let's check out the new features in Painter 4. Looks like they added a lot of natural media, some shape editing tools, some image editing features, vector shape tools. 
They've added floaters, which I guess are just layers. That's what I was looking for. And we'll go back to that and see if we can make that work. You can make movies. And this is really cool. Net Painter, the first product to enable collaborative artwork creation. Using the networking feature, you can log into a single artwork session and take turns using any of Painter's brushes across the artwork. That sounds a lot like Draw Pile, which you can use today. And this is really cool because I never knew that this existed. Go ahead and close this out. So here's the floaters. So I think what's happening here in regards to layers is this is the canvas, just a single layer. And if you want to create a layer, then you need to create a selection and then go to edit float. Now we have a floater, which is a layer and we can move it around. So the order that you have to do this is a little bit strange because we're all used to how layers work now. But if I wanted to, I could select my brush tool, choose a different color, paint a little bit. And then as you can see, if I move the floater, Paint is on the canvas separate from the floater or the layer. I don't know how people work this way, but I guess that's just what they had to do. Hats off to you, Jeremy Sutton. All right, so now that I've figured out how to use layers and I have a pretty good grasp on the basic tools that are available, let's see if I can create a quick little painting using Curl Painter 4. I'm gonna close this and this. We'll create a new document. I'm gonna go ahead and just tidy things up a bit. I don't think I wanna use that color set probably just going to use one layer since it's so complicated to use the floaters. Make my canvas a bit bigger here. Don't know if I want to use these controls or not. Get the good color picker here. And let's draw something like a kiwi fruit or something like that. I'll choose a grayish color to sketch with. Get the pencil here. Unfortunately, my keyboard shortcuts don't work. If I want to change that paper back to basic paper, that would probably be good. I'll be able to see what I'm doing a lot better there. Now this is interesting because people using this application may not have had a drawing tablet. They weren't as commonplace for the average person. So even though I don't have pen pressure, the fact that I can even draw with my tablet really makes it easier to use this application. So I've created my sketch, but now I just remembered that it's really hard to use layers. So that was perhaps maybe not a good idea because now I won't be able to easily hide the sketch. So I think I'll just use my liquid brushes because I like the way that those perform. I'll choose a brownish color. The color picker doesn't feel that much different from the contemporary color picker, so that's good. In order to change the brush size, we need to go to controls size. Not very convenient. I don't know how people fit all these palettes on the screen here. So here we can change the size. I can make it bigger that way, but I have to build it. Are you kidding me here? Now I have a brush that's too big, so I'll want to undo that, make it a bit smaller, build it, and there we go. And as you can imagine, a bigger brush is going to be slower. So now we'll move this out of the way, this out of the way. We'll get our interior color for our Kiwi here. And although I'm emulating this, I am using a pretty fast computer. So I can imagine that these big brushes probably didn't perform all that quickly on an old Macintosh. Gonna have to rebuild that brush again. Good times. If I ever hear you complain about how difficult Corel Painter is again, then I'm just gonna refer you to this video. <laughs> this is difficult. So I'm not gonna go too in-depth into shading this. This is just a demo painting, just to see how it feels to create a painting here in this older version. It's interesting to see how far the software has come, but I wouldn't want to go back to this older version. But if you consider what else was available at the time, this is some pretty amazing stuff. Now, if I knew about this back in the day, this would have been awesome. I had no idea, but again, I had a Macintosh computer, but it was not very fast. And it might have been very, very, very tedious to work this way, especially without a drawing tablet. So I'm kind of glad I wasn't introduced to this until around Painter 11. All right, so we'll put some seeds in here and then we'll call it good. I think this brush is too big, so I'm going to rebuild it again. We can change our dab profile as well if we want to. But I assume every time you make a change, you have to rebuild your brush. I'm going to go ahead and make this brush more opaque so I can really fill this in here. And let's zoom out a bit. Let's zoom out to let's say 33%. That looks like a Kiwi. I think I've had enough. I think you've got a pretty good idea of how Corel Painter has changed since version four. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, click the like button. And if you're new to this channel, be sure to subscribe. I create lots of Corel Painter tutorials and videos like this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.